Knicks versus Cavs. Game one is scheduled for Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. It is our time now as Knicks fans to do our part. The Knicks, they made the playoffs. Now it's time for the fans to step up. I'm a superstitious guy. So I don't want to be the guy that jinxes it, and I don't want you to be the one that jinxes it either. If you want the Knicks to beat the Cavaliers in round one of the playoffs, like this video. You don't want to be the person in three weeks from now that didn't like this video, and you're the reason the Knicks are going to Cancun a little bit early in the playoffs. If you want the Knicks to beat the Cavs, hit that thumbs up icon. Welcome into New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. The NBA playoffs are right around the corner, and we're talking playoffs in today's video. We will preview the Knicks versus Cavs round one matchup. We'll talk about all the keys to victory for the New York Knicks. I'll give you my prediction as well, and we're going to go through a Julius Randle injury update, and that's what we'll, where we will start today's video because Julius was on the bench for Sunday's game against the Indiana Pacers. And he wasn't wearing that protective boot, kind of the walking boot that we've seen him in since he had that ankle injury a couple of weeks ago. The report was he would be reevaluated by the medical staff on April 13th. First playoff game is April 15th, so they will make a decision on if he will play in game one. But I thought it was good news that he was on the sideline, he was on the bench, here he is chopping it up with Obi Toppin and not wearing that protective walking boot that helps the swelling and just take the pressure off of your ankle when you're walking around. I think that's a step in the right direction. And I think that Julius Randle is going to be ready to go game one. He is one tough SOB, played in pretty much every game this year until, did play in every game until an ankle injury. And I think it's going to have to take him being less than 55% for him to be out there. He's going to be out there whether it's at 100% or not. That's still TBD at the moment. But I believe Randall will be out there. And Tom Thibodeau gave kind of a good, I would say, status update for Julius Randall yesterday. He said, it's just the next step following the protocol progression, so making good, steady progress. He's already shooting, but no contact or anything like that, but he's doing well overall. And as much as we like to, you know, be hard on Julius Randle, and as, as I am, I wouldn't say I'm a Julius Randle hater, but I am someone that understands the weaknesses and the pluses of his game. And I also know this, the Knicks, they need Julius Randle back. If the Knicks are going to beat the Cleveland Cavaliers in round one of the NBA playoffs, Randle has to be healthy, and he has to produce like he did all season long, playing 77 games, which is an incredible number for a guy like him that really is just a bulldog out there. Yes, he is a jump shooter, but he is always in the paint. He's a very physical player. 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 25 points per game, and he was efficient all year long. 46% for the deck and 34% from downtown. He is one of the engines on this offense, and the Knicks, they need him out there. When Randall's out there, it's easier for guys like uh, Jalen and R.J. Barrett and Quentin Grimes. It opens, you know, shots for them, because you have to, as a defense, focus so much of your energy on Julius Randle, and we've seen that time and time again. Go back to the playoffs against the Hawks. He didn't play well, but the focus of their game plan was to slow him down, and if he's out there, that will be J.B. Bickerstaff's as well. You do know that you have to slow down Julius Randle, and if you do that, you're going to have some success, but it's different this year for the Knicks. They have a Jalen Brunson. They have an Emmanuel Quickly. They have a Quentin Grimes. They're not relying on um, Alec Burks and Reggie Bullock anymore and a 36-year-old Derrick Rose to get it done in the playoffs. The Knicks, they need Julius Randle out there, and I think it's the best way and really the only way that the Knicks are going to win this playoff series. So let's get the comment section flowing on today's show. Show Julius Randle some love. I know I'm hard on him. I know probably a lot of you guys are hard on him as well, but let's just get the good vibes going. Show him some love. If you want Julius Randle ready to go uh, game one of the NBA playoffs, type those 30s, his jersey number, down in the comment section. We will be live for every single playoff game here on the channel. This will be the thumbnail for game one. Knicks Cavs Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Join us then and subscribe to the channel. We're going to continue to put out videos every day this week. And we'll also be live for every single game day. We're doing our watch parties. We have did 60 this past year during the regular season. I'm excited to start doing playoff ones. Sub for Knicks. Dubs, if you want the Knicks to beat the Cavs, subscribe to the channel and join us on our watch parties.
I want to go through our five keys to victory for the New York Knicks. Things that have to happen if the Knicks want to advance to the Eastern Conference semifinals. And the first one is, you're not going to shut down or lock down Donovan Mitchell, but you have to slow him down somehow, some way. This is a guy that I think is going to finish top five, top six in NBA, NBA MVPs. Averaged 28 points per game this year, four rebounds, four assists. He did what Donovan Mitchell does. 48% from the deck and 38% from downtown, but there's not just one guy that's going to do it. You can't just expect Quentin Grimes or Josh Hart or Emmanuel Quickly or maybe some Deuce McBride minutes to, you know, slow down Donovan Mitchell. It will be a team effort. It'll be five men on the court having to be in unison, in sync, on the defensive end, trying to slow him down. Maybe you want to go back and watch the playoff series last year where the Utah Jazz fell to Jalen Brunson and the Dallas Mavericks because Donovan Mitchell was not good in that playoff series. Sure, you look at the raw numbers, you're like 25.5 points per game, 5.7 assists per game. He played really well, but he was inefficient and he was erratic. 39% from the deck and 20% from downtown. You need constant ball pressure on Donovan Mitchell. Rough him up on offense and make him work on the defensive side of the court. If he has to guard on defense for every possession of the 48-60 minute game, you're going to have some trouble for him, and you're going to have to make him work. That's what's going to happen. Whether he's guarding Brunson or Mitchell, have him run off, or, or uh, Quentin Grimes, I should say. Have him run off screens and have him work on that side of the court. You're not going to shut him down, but you got to slow him down and make him at least be inefficient in his ways on the way to 30 points per game, which I'm sure he will average. Another huge part for the Knicks will be limiting Cleveland's offensive possessions. They're one of the best offenses in the NBA this year, but they are one of the slowest paced teams in NBA. They actually rank last in pace and as well as possessions per game. So when you do that, but you're also a really efficient offense, you can't give them extra chances. They don't score that many points per game, just 112 points per game, which is 25th in the NBA. But when you look beyond just the points per game and you factor in efficiency and possession and time on the offensive court, they are one of the best offensive rated teams in the NBA. They're at 115.5, which is seventh best in the NBA. The way you have to limit offensive possessions is by finishing defensive possessions. And the way you do that is by grabbing rebounds. You're going to have to keep Jared Allen and Evan Mobley off the offensive glass. I wouldn't say they are good offensive rebounders. I mean, when you look at the offensive rebound percentage for their bigs compared to our bigs, we are the much better offensive rebounding team. Mitchell Robinson is statistically the number one offensive rebound percentage player in the NBA. You got to keep Allen off the glass. You got to keep Mobley off the glass. You need guys like Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hartenstein to dominate the defensive glass. You can't have Allen and Mobley grabbing offensive rebound after offensive rebound and kicking it out to Darius Garland and kicking it out to Donovan Mitchell. You have to find a way to limit their possessions, win the pace battle, and at the end of the day, win on the offensive and defensive glass. I think that will be a huge Huge priority for Tom Thibodeau as he goes into this matchup. I think another big key will be to make the role players beat you for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Because when you look at the starting lineups for both teams, you could argue that they're pretty much even. I would give Jalen Brunson the edge over Darius Garland, but I would give Donovan Mitchell the edge over Quinton Grimes. R.J. Barrett, Karis LeVert, maybe that's Isaac Okoro in the starting lineup. That could be a split. Julius Randle, at this point, in my opinion, is better than Evan Mobley, but we do know that Mobley is a young player and a guy that's in the running for Defensive Player of the Year. I think Allen is a little bit better than Mitchell Robinson. They do kind of the same things, but I wouldn't be surprised if Robinson outplayed him, but right now, Allen is the overall better player, in my opinion. So you're somewhat split as the starters. The Knicks have a couple better starters. The Cavs have a couple of better starters. So you need their role players to play a style of game that benefits the Knicks. And what I mean by that is make these guys beat you. Don't let Garland beat you. Don't let Donovan Mitchell beat you. Make Karis LeVert, who's averaging 12 points per game this year, or Isaac Okoro, or Seti Osman, or Dean Wade. Make their role players be better than your role players. Because I do believe the Knicks have a huge advantage in their depth and overall bench unit. When you talk about you're comparing the benches, they don't have an Emmanuel quickly off the bench. They don't have a Josh Hart 
off the bench. They don't have a backup center like Isaiah Hartenstein. And if Obi Toppin's going to get minutes, which I expect him to actually get now, at one point I thought he could be out of the rotation, but if Randall's going to be hobbled by that ankle injury, Obi's going to have to play. And in the last couple of games he started for the Knicks with Randall out, he's been really good, scored over 30 points a couple of times. Not expecting that, but Obi, get the easy bucket you get in the fast break game. Knock down your threes. And same with Quentin Grimes. As Grimes is able to knock down threes like he has so well the past couple of games, I believe in the last nine games he's averaging over 22 points per game, that is going to be critical for the Knicks. You need, you need an Emmanuel Quickly game, you need a Quentin Grimes game, and maybe even a Josh Hart or an Obi Toppin game. You've got to have your bench outplay the bench and role players for the Cleveland Cavaliers. We'll get to more keys to victory coming up in a second. I'll get to my prediction right here in a sec. But first, get your New York Knicks playoffs t-shirts. The playoffs are here. The Knicks are in. And you need to rep, rep some Knicks gear, especially some Knicks playoff gear. Go to chatsports.com slash NYK playoffs. That is chatsports.com slash NYK playoffs. The link is right there. It's also clickable in the comments and description of today's video. I think the overall X factor for the New York Knicks in this series is R.J. Bear. I know Grimes has to play good. Quickly has got to play good. But if R.J. Barrett can somehow have a good series, I really do think the Knicks are going to win this series. Had an up and down season, I would guess. He'd had some good stretches. He had some bad stretches, and it was never really consistent for R.J. Barrett. Still found a way to average almost 20 points per game. Overall, the field goal percentage is pretty decent for his standards. Almost 44% from the deck overall, but it's a three-point percentage that slipped this year and really was the Achilles heel of his game, only 31% from downtown. If you can get RJ to average 18 to 20 points per game and above 45% from the deck, you're looking good. And RJ has a chance to shut all of the haters up right now. There's a lot of people that root for the Knicks that want RJ Barrett gone. Sometimes I feel like that. I don't think he's the best fit roster construction-wise with a guy like Brunson or Julius Randle, but the time is now. RJ, remember, your general manager, Leon Rose, wanted to trade you for Donovan Mitchell, the person you're playing in round one. How about you show everybody that you're on that same level of play? Maybe you're not, maybe you are, but now is the chance for RJ Barrett to show everybody in the world that he belongs and should be a guy that should be mentioned when talking about good players in the NBA. You have a chance here. You have the matchup at the small forward spot. In my opinion, you're better than Kara Silver. In my opinion, you're better than Isaac Okora. But it doesn't matter what I think. You have to go out and prove it. This is your second playoff series in the NBA. R.J. Barrett is going to be the X factor for the New York Knicks. The time is now for R.J. He needs to step up. Let's show him some love in the comments section. Type his jersey number, number nine. If you want R.J. Barrett to play well, to rise to the occasion and show everybody that will be watching that he is one of the best in the NBA at his position. He has to show it this week and this weekend and the upcoming weeks. Type his jersey number, number nine, down in the comment section. The most important key is let Jalen Brunson cook. And, and a lot is going to fall on Jalen Brunson's shoulders. I think for the Knicks to win this playoff series, he has to go blow for blow with Donovan Mitchell. He needs to show that he could be the best player on the court at times, which he did all season long. I mean, the guy averaged 24 points per game, six, uh, six assists, three rebounds, 49% from the field, 41% from downtown. You need Jalen Brunson to hit his threes. You need him to be a captain. You need him to be a leader. You need him to be the floor general that keeps everybody calm. When the game gets a little bit out of reach, the Cavs are going to go on runs. They have a very explosive offense. When the Cavs go on a 13-0 run, can Jalen Brunson come back, walk into a triple, and silence the crowd at Quicken Loans Arena? That's what you need out of Jalen Brunson. Just do what you did last postseason when Luka Doncic was out of the lineup and you played Donovan Mitchell and the Utah Jazz. In those three games without Luka, Jalen Brunson was the best player on the court, and it wasn't even close. 30 points per game, five assists, 48% from the deck, and 41% from downtown. Now is the time for Jalen Brunson to be great. We sung the praises of Jalen Brunson all season long. Is he going to get you know, some votes for the MVP? Probably not, but he absolutely deserves it. He went to a team in the Knicks that raised their win total by 10, and the Dallas Mavericks are now looking to try and tank as they did this year without Jalen Brunson. 
We need him to be great. Make Julius Randle great. Keep him calm. When he goes into one of those spaz attacks that he most inevitably will, can Jalen Brunson reel him in and keep him calm? There's not a lot of playoff experience on this team. Jalen Brunson really doesn't have that much either. But he went to the Western Conference Finals last year, and he needs to shed some of that wisdom on the young players, like quickly, and Grimes, and Toppin, as well as Josh Hart needs to be a leader on this team as well. But it comes down to Jalen Brunson. If he can go blow for blow with Donovan Mitchell, the Knicks, they will win this series. So I want to ask you guys this. I've gone through my keys to victory. You got to own the glass. You got to limit their possessions. Try to slow down Donovan Mitchell. Make the Karis Karis Leverts of the world beat the New York Knicks. So I want to ask you guys this question right here. Who do you got? Who do you got in this 4-5 matchup in round one? Is it the Knicks? Is it the Cavs? Sound off for me down below. I'm rolling with the home team. And by the home team, I mean the New York Knicks. I'm going with the Knicks in six. I wanted to go Knicks in seven, but Knicks in six sounds way cooler and it rhymes. I really do think the Knicks are going to win this series. I think Randall's going to have a bounce back playoff performance when he gets healthy. I think Quentin Grimes and Emmanuel quickly are going to provide themselves with great opportunities and they're going to be the X factors for this team in this series. Quickly plays great. Grimes plays great. I know Randall and Brunson are probably going to play good as well, but that is going to be key for the Knicks. I got the Knicks in six. Let me know your serious prediction down in the comment section as well. Appreciate everybody for tuning in to the video today. We'll continue to put out videos every day on the channel this week. We're actually going live on the channel tomorrow. We'll do more preview stuff. We'll do some mailbags. We'll chop it up with you guys as well. So I'll see you tomorrow on the channel live for an NBA playoff preview.